Absolutely, Dan. We can see the five ship now as they come over the Santa Monica Mountains. They are on their way to SoFi. I believe the anthem is underway inside the stadium as well, and so are the Jets. The goal here is for the Jets to hit over the stadium right as the final note of the anthem plays. And they've actually got demo team controllers on top of the stadium right now, and they are listening to the anthem and working to guide these Jets in as as they approach Inglewood, California. And I hope you can see it because it is just, it's awe-inspiring, Dan, it really is. And we have a fantastic view from the back of the P-51 Mustang. You can see the A-10, F-22, F-35, and F-16 as they roar over the skies of Los Angeles headed towards SoFi Stadium. And it is a breathless shot, Caitlin. How close are they? Uh, they are very close, and I can hear the anthem. I'm starting to get chills. It is uh, approaching the final stanza of the anthem now, and the Jets are on their way. They're almost directly overhead of us here at the Forum. And, oh, my gosh, Dan, they look amazing. It is so cool. So I hope you are getting a great shot. I hope you have a great view because, uh, man, I'm the luckiest girl in the Air Force right now. Here they come. Wow, oh, that is awesome. American Air Power right there, the Air Force at 75. As you get another great shot there, out the back of the P-51. Let's take a look. You may have had the opportunity to see them at an air show, new, modern-day aircraft flying alongside World War II, Korea, or even Vietnam-era airplanes. It's called a heritage flight, and it has a special meaning. It kind of honors those, uh, those who came before us and uh, essentially the work that they put in to make uh, our Air Force the greatest Air Force in the world. A typical heritage flight usually consists of one modern-day aircraft flying alongside an older-era aircraft. Today's flight is unique in that we will actually see five aircrafts, all from different eras, in the formation today. This is the very first time that we'll fly all five airplanes, so a legacy airplane with four single ship uh, demonstration teams uh, in one formation at a public venue, and it'll be really cool to showcase that capability and uh, be a part of it. For the demonstration pilots, this is a unique opportunity that they are excited to have. Yeah, obviously I'm honored. I think any pilot would uh, be honored to be a part of this formation and also to, to do this over the Super Bowl. So uh, I'm just excited to be here, excited to be part of the team. We're there to support the pilots, to be able to do their job that they do every day. We need to do ours. Amory Peeper is a crew chief with the F-35 demo team. The pilot usually asks you, hey, is the jet good? And you have to tell them the truth. If it's not good, then why are they flying? It's that trust that, yes, when I say it's good, the jet is good to go and they can fly without having to worry about anything. Nobody understands the importance of this dynamic better than the demo team pilot herself, Major Wolf. I'm doing a lot of dangerous things, very aggressively maneuvering the airplane to its maximum performance. Everything maintenance-wise or airplane-wise that I don't have to focus on allows me to provide a better show. Aaron Pieper knows the responsibility well, coming from a family with a long Air Force history. My family has always been with the Air Force, always been around airplanes, and they're kind of mad that I got the newest, prettiest jet to work on. In the end, it's all about a love of flight and showcasing the capabilities of the Air Force. I can never get sick, honestly, of the jets taking off. Seeing them fly is like I put my hand on this jet. I'm directly involved in putting that thing in the air. There are few guarantees in the world of football, but for over 50 years, NFL fans can count on one thing every Super Bowl, an Air Force flyover. And Super Bowl 56 is no exception. I think everyone knows if you've seen a flyover over the Super Bowl, like that is the start of the game. The energy, the excitement, it's been such an integral part of our game and I just can't imagine a Super Bowl existing without it. You seem the planes are simply flying across the state. The truth, however, is that the coordination to do so is quite complex. We're closely coordinating with people on the ground to get the timing correct uh, and basically fly over as the last portion of the national anthem is played. 
We're gonna have to get them uh, off the ground to a holding point early enough that if the anthem were to go early, that they would be able to be on time, but late enough so that if the pregame ceremonies go long, that they have enough fuel to be able to hold to, to still hit the exact right point. So there's quite a bit of coordination and a lot of that goes into the planning. This ability to be exactly at a target location at a specified time is something that these pilots are very familiar with. And demonstrations like today provide invaluable training required for real world missions. Getting a time over target, what we call to hit a certain space and time at a certain altitude with a certain group of airplanes at an ex exact precise amount of time to deliver ordnance is kind of how that would relate to real world combat operations. And because flyovers contribute to both essential training and mandatory flying hours, they come at no additional expense. National events like the Super Bowl allow these professionals the chance to display their skills for the whole country to see. Being able to be on a national stage, such as the Rose Bowl or the Super Bowl, gives us that outreach to let people know that not only do we have the greatest Air Force in the world, but our capabilities are, are par none. 